Hey YouTube, so um, I wanted to make a video addressing a common argument um, I hear for evolution that sounds interesting at first, but it becomes pretty absurd when you look at it logically. Um, so a lot of times I hear people talk about evolution and say, well, you deny evolution? Uh, that's like denying gravity. Um, now, this this is something that is it's an interesting argument, um, but it's it's it becomes quite absurd. So, for example, I have two experiments I'm gonna um, that I'm gonna do on video, and you can do them with me at home. And for the sake of this video. Um, for the most part, let's assume that we're all evolutionists. Let's assume that we all believe in evolution. Now, obviously that's not the case in real life, but let's do this for pretend. Let's take a pen and put it in front of us. You know, hold the pen out like this, you know, just a few feet in front of you. And, you know, maybe hold it like this, you know, whichever reference you have. And let go. Oh wow, look at that. You can repeat this experiment over and over again until the end of the world. And this time the pen fell all the way on the floor. Now what I want you to do is take, if you have like a desk in front of you or any kind of flat surface, you know, some then I want you to take uh, some of the bacteria on there and I want you to watch those bacteria evolve into sentient life over the course of billions of years. Now a lot of you will look at this and say oh well obviously you don't understand evolution, you know evolution is something that happens over a long period of time, you can't just observe it happening like that. This is exactly my point. Evolution claims that all life on Earth arose from a single-celled prokaryote, um, basically bacteria. Um, some, pro to keep it simple, we'll call it bacteria. You know, those of you who are scientists might understand prokaryotes, not necessarily bacteria. But just for keeping the language simple, you know, simple single-celled organism that lived on Earth billions of years ago supposedly developed into all of the life that we see today. And this supposedly happened through random mutations and natural selection, through purely naturalistic processes. Um, this is the claim made by, by the general theory of evolution. So a lot of times textbooks will say, well, or you'll hear people say, uh, well, evolution just means change over time. And that's not really true. Um, evolution means a lot more than that. Um, if we're talking about you know, Darwin's theory of evolution, or if we're talking about um, evolutionary theory or general evolutionary theory, then the fact that species change is only one tiny part of that. Now, the problem is that the fact that species change is also part of the creation model. So whether you're a creationist, evolutionist, or intelligent design advocate, everybody agrees that species change. In fact, it was a creationist that first came up with the idea of natural selection, not Charles Darwin. Fun fact. So even in Darwin's time, the fact that species change wasn't controversial. Everybody knew that. Um, it was known for centuries. Um, Darwin noted that even in the Bible you had selective breeding for particular traits. So change over time in and of itself wasn't anything new. What made Darwin's ideas uh, quite radical was the idea that the fact that species change could be extrapolated indefinitely. Um, could be extrapolated to say that all life on Earth was ultimately related um, through the universal tree of life. So, obviously I've explained this uh, quite in detail in previous videos. But what I want, my point here is that we can observe 
gravity. We can observe the effects of gravity. I can observe a pen dropping. But the idea that single-celled organisms developed into everything, including humans, um, that can't be observed. You might think it's a strong inference, um, but even if we had all of the data in the world to back this up, which I don't think we do, then, you know, and I've examined it. I've talked a lot about the supposed evidence for evolution in my videos. Um, I even had my high school biology teacher who had a master's in biology uh, one day told me that I knew evolution more than she did. And, you know, you guys might laugh at her, but she knew her stuff. And, you know, I've, I've studied this uh, quite in depth. So, and my, my evolutionary biology professors, all three of them actually, complimented me as well when I took evolutionary biology. But, bottom line, um, gravity is something we can observe. I can repeat, you know, the same experiment a million times and observe it happening, and we can test our theories about gravity. We can test, um, we could test our models and say, okay, you know, if this model makes this prediction mathematically, then what we'd expect this outcome to be. Now, Darwinian evolution in the large scale, or neo-Darwinism, whatever view of evolution we're talking about, whether it's classical Darwinism, which you know, is little, which is quite a bit older, of course, or whether it's um, neo-Darwinism slash modern synthesis, or any kind of post-neo-Darwinism, doesn't have the mathematical rigor of something like gravity. Um, yes, we could talk about population genetics and you know analyze uh, changes in a population over time on a small scale, um, but when you start talking about the grand overall claims, such as claims that old world monkeys developed into humans ultimately, um, which is what Darwin said in his book, in one of his books, um, then you don't have the same mathematical rigor as gravity. So you can't make those quantifiable predictions. Now you might be able to make generic qualitative predictions, but you can't make the same type of quantifiable predictions that you can make with gravity. This is an inherent advantage that somebody like the physicist who studies gravity has over the claims of somebody who is an evolutionary biologist. So basically the bottom line with this is that no matter how strong of an inference you think the grand overarching claims of evolution are, no matter how strongly supported you believe that is as an inference, it's not on the same level as something that can be directly observed, like gravity. Um, it's not on the same level as something that can be tested over and over again a million times a day. Because the idea that single-celled organisms ultimately develop into all life on Earth is not something we can repeat. We can't even repeat it once. Uh, we don't have a time machine to go back and observe this happening. Um, yes, we have fossils, um, and Many evolutionists have uh, been kind of candid in acknowledging that the fossil record doesn't support uh, what Darwin would have expected. But that aside for the moment, even if we had a 100%, even if we had a fossil record that 100% supported the Darwinian worldview, Darwin's claims would still be an inference based on that fossil record. It wouldn't be something you could directly observe, like this pen falling. So the even if evolution were 100% supported by the evidence, even if we could make um, a much stronger case for evolution than what can honestly be made, it's still not on the same level as gravity. Because gravity can be directly observed, and theories about gravity can be tested a lot more readily than theories about evolution. Even that which can be known with a great deal of certainty about population genetics, um, that which is well established and has been well established for a long time, even that as well known as it is, as solid as it is, isn't on the same level as gravity because of the difficulty, the inherent difficulty of studying something like uh, population genetics um, and the various factors that are involved 
um, in genetic drift, in natural selection, um, in all of these, in all of the different aspects of population genetics. Um, there's a lot more variables involved versus gravity. And so inherently even population genetics, which we know a lot about, isn't on the same level as gravity. Um, and so to claim that the overarching evolutionary claims, many of which are really mere speculation, to claim that those are on the same level as gravity um, is disingenuous, or at least shows a lack of understanding of how science works and of the scientific method. Even if you agree, even if you believe that evolution is 100% supported by the data, or even if you believe it's 110% supported by the data, then I'm, I'm sorry, but it's still not on the same level as gravity. Um, the two can't be equated so easily and so flippantly. But anyway, thank you for taking the time to watch my video. Uh, please feel free to subscribe, comment, and rate. Uh, let me know what you think. Let me know if you have any questions. Let me know if you have anything you would like to request for a future video. Um, either on creation versus evolution or questions about the Christian faith and apologetics in general. Um, feel free to ask me anything, leave anything you want to ask in the comments section. Um, the only thing, obviously, it's not a lot of spam. Also, feel free to share my video with others. I do have a page on my website where you can donate if you so choose. However, I would much, much prefer if people could share my videos around, share my video with their friends, share my videos with their families. Um, because honestly, I don't make these videos to get rich. I don't make these videos to make money. My goal with making these videos is to share this information because I think I have ideas. I think I have ideas that are worth sharing. Um, hopefully, <laughs> TED Talks won't try to uh, slap a copyright on me with that one, but I think I have ideas that are worth sharing. I think I have ideas that are worth talking about and uh, worth sharing to the world. And hey, Perhaps I'll get my 15 minutes of fame on TED someday. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. This is Greg, out.